we can learn here from David because as a result of him not going out and doing what the king should have done as a result of not going out and, and following what the plan was and executing what he was called to do as a result of not following that plan his eyes are taken off what it is that God wants him to do and here's what I would like to suggest to you that anytime that we are not doing what God has called us to do it gives the devil an opportunity to call us to something else See, the problem with a lot of us is there are too many of us who are not understanding what God's plan is for our lives and actually working that plan. And when you do not work that plan, the devil presents to you other plans that are appetizing and you go and follow those. And this is why it becomes extremely important for us as individuals and especially for us as a church to know what's our mission, what's our plan, because when we don't work that plan, we work other stuff. And too many of us have conversations that we have no business having or doing things we have no business doing. And the reason is because we're not following what God has called for us in our lives. One of the reasons that Jesus did never had an issue and was never called to all different kinds of temptation, never gave in, is because Jesus looked at the plan, looked at the temptation and said, you know what, that doesn't help me accomplish the plan, therefore I want nothing to do with it. There are too many of us that allow things and people in our lives that don't contribute to the plan that God is calling us to. But they take up your time. And so here's David. Should have been out on the battlefield. And if he's out doing what God is calling him to do, he doesn't have to deal with this temptation. So he's out and he wakes up in the middle of the night and decides to go for a stroll. And as he's going through the stroll, some will tell you that the layout of David's particular room, as he goes out into the loft, he's able to kind of look down. And there he sees a beautiful woman. And as he looks at this beautiful woman, the Bible, of course, gives us the idea that, that she's bathing. But what's actually taking place here is she is now cleansing herself from her time of menstruation. They had to go through a cleansing. And so while she's being cleansed, she's being looked at with dirty eyes. And so David looks, and he says, I have me one of those. And so he says, hey guys, and he calls his boys together, he says, y'all, can you do me a favor, and can you go bring me that particular sister? And I love what the guards do, although they punk out just a little bit. They say, hey David, isn't that Bathsheba? You, you know, Uriah's wife? I just want to make sure we're talking about the same person. And, and so they're trying to kind of, sort of, hold David accountable. I hope y'all following me. But, but they're, they're kind of looking at his position, and they don't want to really call him out. So they're kind of trying to hope that David will maybe make the decision on his own. And here is the problem that I think that a lot of us have. We don't like to call sin by its right name. Uh, we like to dibble and dabble, and sometimes we'll say this to this person, and sometimes we won't say that to somebody else. But I love what Sister White says surrounding these stories, and also uh, with, with e Eli and Hath Nine Phineas, that when we do not call individuals out because of their sin, we are just as guilty as they are. And there are some of us inside of the church of God that let stuff go on far too long under your nose. I'm going to tell you something, and this might be new for some of you. Gossip is a sin. Yeah. Romans chapter 1, whispers without understanding. But we'll sit there and let people do all this talking, and we'll not say anything and not do anything about it. Man up and call them out in the name of Jesus. And it does, I don't care, deacon, elder, there's a way that you do it. I tell my members all the time, if you see me, Michael Kelly, stepping out of line, you better call me out. Why? Because I'm not simply trying to pastor a church. I'm trying to be saved. Well, you know, you're, you're, you're the pastor who's trying to get to the same place you are. Are y'all following me? And one of our biggest issues, why we can't call people out, and I'll tell you one of the reasons why, because we don't have a relationship with most people. We click up, and we greet the same people every time we do the meet and greet. Are y'all following me? And so we don't feel comfortable saying something to somebody that we haven't developed a relationship with. And that's why it becomes so important that as a church, we become so close with one another, with as many people as possible, that when we see them stepping out of line, when we come to them, they'll know that we're not just trying to cause mess, but we actually care and don't want to see them fall. David's men failed him. 
They says, no, David, I ain't going to get him. I'm not going to go get her. But they punked out. And so they go and they bring her back. We all know how that goes. David has a good time. And here's what's so funny. I'm sure he thought after he had that good time that nothing was going to follow him. But here's what I find. That, that nowadays, a good time isn't just a good time. There's luggage that comes with your good time. Sometimes that luggage is in the form of uh, maybe some, some unexpected children at an unexpected time. And sometimes you got some diseases that now you just got for the rest of your life. So now it comes back. And she finds out, yo, I'm pregnant. David, I know it's you. And of course, the rest of the soap opera gets crazy. I'm telling you, you don't need to watch TV. I mean, just read the Bible. So David tries to cover this thing up, cover the scandal up, killing folk, do all that kind of stuff to cover the fact that this is his child. But I've got a problem here. How did they get to the point where two married folk decided that they wanted to, to be together. And this is what we want to talk about really today in our theme, Boy Meets Girl. Now, there's several schools of thought that a lot of scholars have come up with who's at fault here, David or Bathsheba. There are some individuals who come from this mindset that Bathsheba was a seductress, setting up David. Knew that he always took a walk. <laughs> at that time in the morning and just kind of made herself available. So that David would see, and when he saw it, she knew that would be it. That's one school of thought. The other school of thought is that David took advantage of Bathsheba. That because he was the king, how could she say no to the king? She had to do what the king said. Then there's other scholars who would say, yes, but Bathsheba heard the stories about David's spirituality and somewhere in the narrative could have appealed to his spirituality. And so we have some that blame David and some blame Bathsheba. I'd like to suggest to you that they're both at fault. And here is the reason why. The scandal took place. The affair took place. And I need you to hear me. It's going to be uncomfortable, but it's got to be said because some folk have got to be set free and some folk have got to get out of something before they get into this. But David and Bathsheba both got involved in an affair because they both made themselves available to one another when they should have only been available to their spouses. Affairs occur, listen to me carefully, when we make ourselves available to people that we should not be available to. Now, being available to those we should not be available to is a choice. What is it, everybody? It is a choice. And the idea of being available to those we shouldn't comes and actually starts before we're married. Did you all know that? Because here's what a lot of us do during the dating experience, during our time growing up. You make yourself available to people in ways that you should not be available to them. And so it becomes easier in the habit of your life to be available to more, more than one person than you ought to be available to. Let me break it down in a very physical way, and I'm just going to be very frank with you. Your brain, the way God made you, was meant to experience intimacy with one person. No, this isn't a spiritual thing. This is a body thing. What neurologists have discovered is that when two individuals come together and experience pleasure, your brain then, I'm not going to get into all of the intricacies of that, but in a nutshell, your brain now says pleasure comes from that person. Hence the reason, and when you get around that person again, guess what your brain starts telling you? Pleasure comes from that person. And your brain gets used to that one particular ind ind individual and says, okay, when that person's around and certain things are getting ready to go down, that's where I get pleasure from because that has been my first experience of pleasure. But look at what happens to us. We'll have pleasure with one, and then that doesn't work out, and so we'll find somebody else to have pleasure with. And so your brain says, what? Okay, now this one is the one that when I have pleasure, this is who we get pleasure from. But then that one doesn't work out. And so you go to another one, and then you have pleasure with them in sexual and intimate ways, and your brain's like, okay, I was used to there, I was used to there, now I need to get used to here. And so your brain is going through this, this cycle of trying to figure out who is the one we're supposed to get pleasure from. And this happens throughout our dating experience, and then here's what we do to our brain, which is unfair. You get married, and now tell your brain just one. 
your brain's like, no. Because for 16, 17 years of your experience, I've been used to getting pleasure from this one, from this one, from this one, this one, and that one. And that's why now that you're with somebody, there are other people that can still turn you on. You weren't wired that way. But you rewired yourself based on the fact that you made yourself available to more people that you should have been making yourself available to. And so the more available you make yourself now in ways that you shouldn't physically and emotionally, it becomes easier to do that in a committed relationship. Are y'all following me? 